material for you here and we're going to over the series on this channel I'm going to be presenting new games and do short episodes so that you know when you go to my channel you don't you do, you just don't see total war you see a whole bunch of games because that's what my channel is about trying new games and trying and playing and trying uh, and creating stories that hopefully you as a viewer can enjoy so don't forget to like leave share comment sub do all that jazz and you know get some snacks get some popcorn popcorn or pizza or burgers or fries or whatever and I've got this game Ash of God's Redemption looks really good why not let's go yep uh, yeah I'm just going for the story mode man this looks like a movie already what to say the visual diversity in this is awesome I really want to see more of this in games Oh my! Ah, here come the evil guys. Oh my, I'm loving this. Epic battle! Why is this a global war game already? My, the action is beginning to build up. Really good. They're forming off. Oh my. Epicness. Epicness combined. Oh my, what happened to them? What happened? No. He failed. No. Unsolved mysteries are like an unquenched thirst. Yep. Premonitions of trouble to spur you to keep going. Mm hmm. One thousand and two years since divine retribution, the end of winter, the Vale of Mercy, foothills of the Milky Mountains. Okay, so I'll just read this. Seven hundred years ago, you and the other Ku Kuros Kuros, Kuros, I don't know took to the field at Drowsy Deep seeking to prevent a great calamity the reaping your self-sacrifice should have destroyed the reapers once and for all nine years ago you begin feeling a growing sense of unease and decided to roam to Manium in search of the cause a month ago you met a Templar servant in the town of Gordon there was something peculiar about him Feeling a long forgotten sense of dread, you realized there was an Umbra Reaper in disguise. He noticed you too, but chose not to pursue. Bowing in jest, he merely winked at you. The return of the Umbra forewarns of an impending reaping. So you head to the Milky Mountains, seeking the local seers. You hope to learn the time and place of the coming reaping and prevent it. When you stepped onto a narrow path, you noticed several sets of footprints. At the time, you thought others might be seeking advice from the Seeress, but they're just ordinary bandits in search of easy prey. Alright, so this is a tutorial. I'm gonna go through it because I know nothing. Let's go. Time to act. 
Blue tiles indicate where your character can move during the current turn. Orange tiles indicate extra moving distance, meaning your character must spend some energy to move over there. So blue tiles, you can pretty much move around here. Orange tiles, you need to be careful of that. So we'll select our skill Quick Strike. And enemies standing on pulsating tiles are within reach and can be attacked using a chosen skill. To select a target, click on the tile it's occupying. So I'm going to click it. Most attacks allow you to damage either the enemy's health or their energy. Select health damage. So your character will close in on the enemy and attack them. So we'll do that. Oh my. He's gone. Ho ho ho. Ah. Ooh. Okay. Damaging an enemy's energy reduces the option because faster movement and powerful skills require energy to execute. Moreover, if an enemy has zero energy remaining, double damage will be dealt to health instead of energy. This enemy has a lot of health but only 5 points of energy, alright? It makes sense to strip him of his remaining energy so you can deal double damage. Click on the enemy with the right mouse button to see a list of skills you can use against him. I have to say the music is epic. Select skill, quick strike. And yeah, we're gonna do this one. You can select an enemy to learn more about their abilities. Yeah, okay. So got this one. Now that you've chosen an enemy, you can see a list of their skills in the lower part of the screen. Mouse over to read their descriptions. So Axel, 2 health, 50% of attack, deals 3 damage. And Berserk. So increases your defense on walking distance by one. Does not end turn. Okay. You can choose to manually walk to your destination before choosing an attack to use. Click on an empty tower with the left mouse button and confirm your action. Okay. If you want to use a skill that doesn't require a target, right click on the tile your active character is standing on. You'll see a golden circle under his feet. Uh, ah, is the golden circle somewhere? Where? Ah, there it is. You'll see a list of skills which do not require choosing a target first. There's also a skip turn button which comes in handy if you're unable to act or don't want to. Remember to always finish your turn by using one of your active character's attacks or by clicking the skip turn button. So select skill circular hit. Choose to damage an enemy's energy. Your character will deal damage to all nearby enemy units. Enemy units with no remaining energy will receive double damage to health instead. End the battle. Okay, and I apologize for reading a bit too much, but for someone from like me that hasn't played before, or for anyone else that hasn't played before, you know, it's best to get acquainted so I can explain the mechanics a little bit more. So let's go. Okay, can we do anything? Uh, and uh, all right, so no, we can't do that. So we're in the turn, wait for him to come. Okay, so the enemy come. Yep. Okay, and we'll do circular hit. Brilliant, finished. So this is our first victory. That is awesome. Close and ah. Okay, you are about to knock on the hut's door while it suddenly swings open. A woman appears on the doorstep. Your heart leaps from your chest. She's the one you left behind when you went to fight that drowsy deep. She is the one you loved, Amma. In a detached manner, Lance, it took you a long time. It's been 702 years. You managed to survive where 12 of our kin perished. Did you go into hiding? Hmm. Please call me Hopper. I'm already used to the name. I was once called Lance when we were together. I wasn't hiding in that battle, you know. 
I was wounded, pierced by arrows. That's why I don't, I didn't complete my task. Hmm. Yes, I've heard the legend of the twelve brave ones. They cast an enchantment on themselves and turned to stone. They achieved their goal. The land they called home was free from plague and reaping. A price too high, though, by my reckoning. Why did you come in search of me again? And what do you really want? I wasn't looking for you, but the local seers. There are signs, Amma. Beasts are leaving the forest of Datura. The Vandil, which has been sighted on woodland trails. I ran into Atak while in Gordon myself. They have returned. It is another reaping upon us. Hmm. That's a foolish question, Hobber. I do not foretell the obvious. You might as well have asked whether winter will follow autumn by that case. The reaping is coming. You know it. All loose, tie all loose ends shall be tied. Mm. That's a foolish question. Okay, yes, sir. What do you mean of the? What do you know of the coming reaping? Mm. The mere fact that it's coming. Rivers will run red with blood, and the abyss will claim many tortured souls. But why this sudden concern for mortals? with mere parasites on the body of mankind. There is nothing to be proud of, Hammer. Even if we're both Umbra, we have long embraced the human way of life. I care about the fate of Terminium. To the reaping, we are no more than specks of dust. This time, we don't have twelve comrades willing to sacrifice themselves. Among those still living, some will succumb and become reapers. Do you really wish to involve yourself, Blance? I need to stop the reapings. They're happening again because of me. It is my fault. Hmm. Still thinking of yourself? We are maggots. The lowliest of servants, lucky enough to have a seat at the table. Are you looking for the forsaken gods of this land? The gods that you once worshipped? I have a book that describes the life of one. Take it. I had a good laugh reading through the pagan nonsense. You are a fool for believing in them. Lance, you really are a fool. Thank you for the book. I've been searching high and low for similar records. But still, when and where will the reaping begin? That's where I'm needed. I know it. 700 years the dead have blamed me and I need your help. Give me your knife, the same our brethren sacrifice themselves with. Give it to me and you'll get your answer. Mm. Pity, I really hope to use it. I doubt anything else can kill a reaper. Well, here you go. But why do you want it? <laughs> the reaping shall begin on the day of the vernal vernal equinox, both in the north and the south, in the towns of Woden and Albius. I wouldn't waste time if I were you. Sadly, I don't have time to reach the north. Farewell. I hope our paths cross once again. Though, you still haven't told me why you need that knife. Hmm. I saw you kill me with this very knife, Hopper. So I hope our paths never do cross again. Farewell. What does one need to meet old age in peace? Only to avoid a major disaster. Indeed. I have to say, it's a really, this is really such a, I love the cinematic Year 1002 song. since Divine Retribution. My. Burkana, the kingdom of Odala, city of Albius. Mm. The spring equinox. Eighth year of peace since the last war. It looks beautiful. A retired captain of the guard and his daughter are strolling through the festival market. Oh, interesting. Strange. A woman in odd clothing is walking away from the town hall. Gleda says, 
Her beauty should be turned in heads, yet I seem to be the only one who notices her. Ah, Thorn says, Gelda, are you daydreaming again? You nod your daughter while you see the burgo monster, Baron Trouble, approaching. Good day, Thorn, Gleda. I take it there is a reason you've been scouring the market since dawn, looking for a gift for Leaky? Yes. How did you know? Albius is far from the largest town. There aren't too many captains of the Royal Guard here, and even fewer captains' wives. And only one of those wives celebrates her birthday on the day of the spring equinox. Please, give her my regards. I will, Burgomaster, though you are most welcome to stop by and do it in person. The Burgomaster is eager to carry on, but one of the citizens calls his name. Trouble gives you a nod and tends to matters of, of great importance. Looking at the retreating Burgomaster in disgust, stubborn old man, he seems resilient. I have heard he's a distant relative to the king himself. The distance of their relation may be the secret to his longevity. Well, it looks like we got carried away and aren't any closer to picking a gift for Leaky. Gladder? What are we gonna get her? Care to give me a hint? What would your mother like? In the, okay, yeah. So in the dialogue window, this icon means that your choice will have far-reaching consequences. We could give her jewelry. Then we should head to Rask's shop by the town hall. If we need clothing, then we can visit the cloth merchants. This is Padang stall. Let, uh, let's go to Rask. Rask's shop. Did Dad find out where I really go during my midday walks? There's nothing criminal in it, but I'd rather nobody knew of my manuscript hunting. I have told him that I go to the pastry shop, which usually isn't true. I just hope Rask doesn't betray my secret. Gelda, this is Rask, an old friend and expert in all kinds of curiosities. We've known each other since older. Hello, Rask. It's been a while. It's been three years, my dear Thorn. We've run into each other now and then. But ever since you arrived in town, newly arrived, and brought a silver necklace with a garnet, you've forgotten all about my shop. Are you here to get a gift for Leaky, your dear wife? You guessed right. Will you help me pick something nice? I remember the last time you bought her a birthday present. It was exactly on the vernal equinox. I won't hide it. I'd have been pleased had you started buying jewelry from me every, every year since, you know. My wife hasn't been interested in jewels for the past few years. Though the garnet necklace is her favorite. She's been feeling better as of late. Is it true that garnets aid a weak heart? If I'm not mistaken, garnets possess no magical properties, but certain other stones do, if you're interested. Concoctions cannot mend an alien heart, but the warmth of a loving family can preserve it. Though I have heard, there is a particularly skilled healer in Ursus, under is her name, but even she cannot perform miracles. A healer from Ursus, yes, I've heard of her. We've been to Ursus and visited the Minia, but it was all for naught. The healer wasn't at her home. They told her she could be wandering with her daughter for years. We cannot exactly pitch camp on her doorstep, can we? And the Minia didn't help at all? My wife and I have visited all the Minias in this kingdom. In those neighboring too, we've talked to the Holy Fathers of the Temple of Divine Retribution. Licky's alien heart is no mere sickness. It's an inborn affliction, aggravated by the difficult delivery of our second child. 
Many years cannot heal such injuries, just as they cannot regrow a severed hand. Before getting into Minios, we were discussing other stones, weren't we? I offer nothing to no one without purpose. Nevertheless, I have been having premonitions as of late. Providence must have brought you to my shop today. You are looking for a gift, and I want you and your family to survive the coming troubles. I have depended on you for too long, and I must help my friend. Call me superstitious, even mad, if it pleases you. I hope I am mistaken. But my premonitions tend to come true, and you, Thorn, know this, and you will benefit from the tricks. This I know. It is indeed expensive, but you can pay in installments over several years if you like. Uh. Ralph reaches into a box and places a highly polished stone on the counter. The metal setting is very unusual. It looks like an insect tightly clutching the stone in its legs. <clears throat> if this large trick reduces in size. A platinum base will squeeze its legs to grip it tightly. Think of it as magic, if you like. Hmm. Magic is of no use to anyone. Hmm. I've never met a sorcerer who could even move a single stone with all his magic. <laughs> no sorcerer would go around floating his power thorn. Why would anyone perform magic for you? It's dangerous, especially for the mage himself. As a merchant, I can tell you that stupidity is the most costly thing in this world. Well, I'm the one who's about to pay. I hope you name the real price of the stone instead of exploiting any stupidity. Such rarities do not come cheap. The price for the stone is a hundred thousand gold coins. Even if I paid you over ten years. I still could not afford it. If you only know, knew how quickly decades go by. What I mean is that at my age, I won't be already thinking in decades for some time. In our case, every hour counts, right, Leda? Does anything come to mind? <laughs> in our case, yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna consider this trick. Poor guy is suffering. <laughs> Listen, here's what we'll do. Take the stone, no deposit, no acknowledgement of debt, and I'll take your word, Thorn, for if you lie, I will lose faith in the kindness of men. If you or your family find no use for it in the next year, you will return to it. Agreed? It would be foolish of me to decline such a generous offer. As strict it is, then, even if I do have to return it in a year's time. Rusk, you are behaving quite strangely today. You take the streaks from the table and hide it under your shirt. You look up at Rask, he is staring at the ceiling, his face pale. At first you are confused, but then you hear the bell ringing from the town hall. Why is the... that doesn't sound like our kinds, man. Could it be that trouble has finally sacked his chimes, man, and hired someone sober? What about you, Rask? Doesn't it bother you, the bell ringing four times a day? You watch in surprise as Rask takes a big sack and starts emptying the contents of his numerous drawers big and small into it. Just a matter of habit, my dear Thorn. But time, you get used to much stranger things. You do not realize how wise a choice you made. Silver could be of use, of course, but the Strix will most certainly aid you. And if it does, how long will I be paying for it? Five years? A decade? The bell keeps tolling. Rusk slings the sack over his shoulder and takes an axe with a curved handle from the wall. It no longer matters. I hope we meet again. I will flee from the town if I were you. The fortress of Opakim is the safest place to go. Now run! The merchant retreats into a shop. You hear the back door open and close. Glitter. Looks like Ross has lost his mind. We should leave. My. My oh my oh my! What has happened to this tunnel? Oh, it's them. Damn. The evil guys. You see Baron Trouble lying on the ground. Blood flows from his mouth, nose, ears and eyes. He is dying. Dorkfall the Reaper. Resilient. You struggle to stay on your feet. Blood gushes from your nose. Glad are scared to death. Cowers behind your back. Oh, the attack turn. 
Thorn asked, what do you want? Nothing. The Burgomaster decided for you all. Decided what? A ritual. A tribute to memory. Use the last of your strength to keep standing. Your heart pounding is about to leap from your chest. Your throat tightens. Dying already? I would have never expected such a thing of humans. You humans are all the same. Leave my daughter alone. I do not need either of you. Yet. A towering monster looks at you for a moment, then extends its arm and points to your pendant. The monster grabs your captain insignia, clenching in its fist, hissing the strikes in the pendant shrinks. The reaping begins with your family, Thorn Brennan. The monster vanishes, you shake your head, come into your senses. Oh, bless gods. Did you hear what is said about our family? Quick, we gotta get home. Gladder cries out, stopping you in your tracks. She hastily pulled some kind of colored plaques from under her belt. Those almost burned me. Ross gave them to me about a week ago. Supposedly, they used to be magical battle cards in the past. They became burning hot all of a sudden. We'll take a look at the cards. Ah, oh, these are the magical cards. The magical blacks. A hot to the touch, almost burning your fingers, yet they fit comfortably in the palm of your hand. You feel as if you could. With but the gesture, sling spells any foe. Could they be regaining their power because of the reaping? You wonder where Ross comes by these cards, but you remember seeing them peddled as curious as su and souvenirs of many Burkhanan markets. Okay, guys, you know what? This has been a really fun episode. I'm gonna stop because the the episode might go a bit too too much over time. But I really hope you've enjoyed it. I appreciate any feedback, and I love games like this that have visuals and text and all this type of stuff. So don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And see you on the next one.